All right, you all. All right, all right. Well, it is that time. It is that time for another edition of Maryland's Cafe Society right here on YouTube. And of course, uh, today is a pre-recording, a pre-recording for Saturday's show. We have um, um, a big show coming up on this Saturday that I'm involved with. And so I won't be able to do the show normally on Saturday as I, I do. And so we're pre-recording it and voila, here we are. So how are you on this day? Um, how's your week been going so far? Well, you know, not only is the show uh, coming to you pre-recorded, but uh, the, the layout of the show, um, the format of the show is gonna be a bit different because we're gonna be addressing some serious, serious issues that are facing the color, uh, black and brown uh, communities here in America. And then we're also going to lighten up later on in the show with a special guest who's gonna be sharing some important information with us. And so um, it's a bit different, but stay right where you are because it's all good, it's good information. And of course, uh, for Cafe Talk, as I said, we're gonna get right into it momentarily we have special guests on deck who will be uh, joining me, two dynamic ladies who will be sharing some important information about COVID-19 and this virtual event that's gonna be happening next week. And then also, as I said later, we're going to have um, a special guest who is receiving a special award for this uh, wonderful music event that I'm involved with um, over the, the next couple of weekends, all right? So let's get right into our coronavirus update, which is gonna lead us into our special segment with our guest. And here's the numbers now. These numbers are coming from the CDC. They happen to be reporting that whites and non-Hispanics make up 55% of COVID-19 cases and that nearly 63% of deaths are or consist of whites and non-Hispanics. Now, just a note that the CDC has said that the reported data is not from every geographic area here in the United States. Some uh, report reporting from various states didn't come in and so the numbers may be off a bit, um, but this data, this information is as of 8 p.m. Eastern time on February 17th. And by the way, the John Hopkins is reporting as of this morning, 27.8 million confirmed COVID-19 cases here in the United States. Um, and the deaths are 491,000. Now again, this is according to uh, John Hopkins, nearly a half a million people. That's a huge, huge number. But what we've noticed over um, the weeks is that the number of deaths and cases are decreasing, which shows improvement, right? Although there is that worry about these new uh, remix versions of the COVID-19 popping up in various states across the country. And however, there are disparities that are still blaring at us coming from the black and brown communities here in the United States. And that of course brings me to our special guest. Joining me today are Camilla Avant, who is Director of Diversity Programs for Color Magazine, and Andrea Brown, who is Executive Director of the Black Mental Health Alliance. Now, we will be talking about an upcoming COVID-19 virtual event that you all need to sign up for. Uh, but before we get into sharing more information about that event, let me just tell you about these dynamic women. Now, Camilla leads Color, which is I a diversity and inclusion online publication and event-based business based out of Boston, Massachusetts. Now, Color provides premier events focused on empowering professionals of color and diverse communities. Prior to her work in publishing, she spent nine years in broadcast television, uh, previously working with Lend Media and Media General Inc., where she negotiated contracts with cable companies for carriage, of network television programming and managed the company's 71 United States broadcast television networks, or I should say stations. 
Camilla is chapter president of the New England's National Association for Multi-Ethnicity and Communications. She earned a bachelor's degree in economics from Rhode Island College and master's degree from the University of Maryland Global College. She sits on um, several boards as well. Our next guest is Andrea, as I said. Now, Andrea is the executive director of the Black Mental Health Alliance. She is a seasoned senior executive and has served in several leadership roles of the NAACP. Now, those roles included strategic planning, membership development and training. Um, she also served as director of internal affairs where she provided oversight for affiliate chapters across the country and those on military installations in Germany and Japan. Now, Andrea's passion and expertise in leadership development, nonprofit management, and strategic planning afforded her the opportunity to uh, collaborate with high profile local and national leaders. Throughout her career, she has implemented and provided oversight for a variety of direct service programs and managed federal, state, and local and foundation dollars that go well into the millions. Now, Andrea is a board member of the Mount Washington Pediatric Foundation in Baltimore, Brown Girls Lead in Washington, DC, and has served or is serving on several other local boards and advisory com committees. Andrea has an undergraduate degree in political science and a master's degree and legal and ethical studies. And listen, you all, I could go on and on and on about these two ladies, but time will not permit me to. So let's just bring them on board and say hello. All right, let's see here. And there they are. Well, well, they're not on video. Ladies, you're not gonna be on video. There Hello. she is. Hello, how are you? Hi, Camilla. Hi, Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you ladies? I was I, I just recently, since the new year, kind of upgraded my show to to have my guests appear on Zoom on camera. And I was thinking, oh my God, they're not gonna come on camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, this podcast stuff is kind of new to me, so uh, um, and I'm a technology geek, so I'll leave it up to you, all of those who are good with that to uh, very work good. it, work very the good. magic. Well, listen, I am so excited to be sharing some time with the both of you. Your your credentials, your accomplishments, your experiences have just left me floored. So I thank you so much for for hanging out here at the Cafe Society today to talk about an important uh, topic. I don't know if you ladies heard me at the top of the show when I shared some uh, numbers from the CDC because you know we've been hearing about um, the impact, the detrimental impact that COVID-19 is having here in, 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 in the communities of color, um, which would make us think that the numbers are, you know, astronomical, but according to the CDC, 55% of the COVID-19 cases are uh, make up people from white and non-Hispanic backgrounds and 63% um, deaths. So, and again, there, there was some, some stipulations there on the website that said all of the reporting was not complete, but mm. um, I'm assuming, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming that um, the concern for black and brown communities and how um, detrimentally this COVID-19 has impacted those communities is based on the overall percentage of population, right? I would think so. I would definitely think so. Because at the end of the day, we know, we've seen the, the unemployment stats, we've seen the hospitalization stats, and we've also seen sort of this um, unrecorded stats on those who don't even report, 
right? So they don't go go to the hospital. They don't, they stay home. So we've also seen that and that's growing among black people and brown people. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, you, you bring that up and even here in, in my uh, circle of influence and people that I know who know people who know people, you're right. <laughs> They, they, they come down with something and they think it's COVID and they ride it out at home and never go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and those numbers, you know, as you reflected, they're subject to change. And sometimes, you know, numbers can be read different ways too. We all know that. So um, it's going to be interesting as we continue to see this vaccine roll out and, um, and the, the, the reporting that comes out from all the different areas. Um, and, and, and how those numbers will change. Yeah, yeah. And so um, here we are, um, you, you ladies um, are here to talk about this upcoming virtual event called the First 100 Days Town Hall. The COVID-19 mm -hmm. vaccine is here, now what? And of course, uh, we, you know, in this introduction just talked about the impact that it's had on black and brown communities. Uh, first, ladies, tell me why and how, well, the why has been established, but how did uh, BMHA and Color Magazine come together on this important um, virtual event? Oh, thanks for the question. Thanks for having um, myself representing Color Magazine. Color Magazine is a diversity inclusion online publication, and we um, also are an event-based business. So we focus on highlighting diversity and inclusion professionals, but also those um, topics and um, issues that affect our diverse communities. So we are, we have had a great um, relationship with BMHA, the Black Mental Health Alliance, um, you know, down there in Maryland, they're doing phenomenal work and Andrew's become a great partner. We've done um, some dis work and discussions around mental health, um, and everything that's happened in 2020, how it's impacted our African-American communities. So um, that's kind of like how we, we virtually uh, connected um, during the turmoil and, and historic events that happened last year. And, and we're just so excited to continue this conversation and our work and collaborate on this project. So, you know, Andrea, great for you to share some words too. Yeah. I think, you know, I think you said it best, you know, um, we find ourselves in this unique moment. Last year, um, I've been at the Black Mental Health Alliance now almost 11, what, 11 months, and uh, so excited about color reaching out so that we could have some conversation about, um, how, you know, what, what the trajectory would look like for Black people. Um, not just in this moment, in the moment of COVID. And one of the things that we've talked about at the Black Mental Health Alliance, we've been around almost 40 years. And, you know, again, part of what we do is educate, train, and tell the truth about what's at stake for Black minds and Black wellness. And so, you know, we knew when COVID hit, we thought, oh my God. So we use the phrase, America gets a cold, the Black community gets pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And we didn't back down from that. And I love the partner in color. She has been amazing. And not that, I, obviously I can say her name, but, but, but I say that because has a real lens about what the impact uh, of this, uh, what the collateral damage will be for black and brown people if we don't uh, collectively communicate, if we don't collectively message, and if we don't collectively collaborate. Yes. Yes, and so there's no um, surprise here in the connection that one of the keynote speakers for the virtual event that's coming up next week is Derek Johnson, the president and CEO of the NAACP. And of course, you have a long history with them. And, and I think that it's just amazing that you leave such a historic organization like the NAACP and end up where you are. I can imagine that the the, the uh, your, your sense of awareness and, and ability to connect the dots is just making you such a powerhouse there. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I tell you what, it has heightened. I am uh, culturally more sensitive and I thought I already was. Mm -hmm. I am, um, you know, fired up about lack of access and, and or. Um, and so, you know, one of the things uh, fr from the lens of the NAACP is 
all things equity for black and brown people, right? Whether that's the vaccine, whether whatever that needs to look like, it's all things equity. And mm -hmm. that's the bottom line. And 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 what we, you know, years ago there was, a, and I can't remember under which president, there was a, um, a, um, a, a message and it was no child left behind, right? Oh, well, yeah. for us, yeah. not just at the NAACP, Bush. but with color, and, and that's right, Bush, mm -hmm. with color and with CMHA, and no community left behind, not the black one, not the brown one, not the marginalized one. And so we've got to make sure that people know what's at stake, whether you take the vaccine or don't, but you've got to know what's at stake. I mean, we really are in a 911 in this moment of time. Oh goodness! And yeah, that that is good. That is good news. And of course, joining Jared Johnson is Dr. Alden Landry, who is associate professor for emergency medicine at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, which is where is that in? Um, That's in Boston, in Boston, Boston. Mass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you were the connection there, Camilla. Yes, Dr. Landry is doing great work. He's um. Uh, an educator, actually Color recognized him in our all-inclusive awards last year. And just a rising star, he's done a lot of work in the community, very invested into um, education and training, you know, those next generations of health, um, public health professionals and, and doctors. And, and so um, having an African young, young because he's, he's, he's not very old, um, a young African-American male physician who um, not only is in the, ERs and, and in, in on the front line, but also in that role where he can educate. Um, I think it's, it's critical, it's, it's critical. And he's just a great voice. He sits um, as an advisor on the New England Medical Association. He's very well respected for, for what he's done. He's involved in Harvard Medical School's Office of Diversity and Inclusion and part, um, Partnership. And so he's committed to the community. So we're just so lucky to have him on as well. Very good. Are there any other panelists who will be joining them on this event? Yes, we're excited right now. We just uh, received confirmation from uh, Dr. Cameron Matthews, and she is the uh, chief medical officer from for the U.S. Veterans Administration. And as you know, um, this is another population um, that is really underserved, especially our African-American veterans. A lot of them are homeless. A lot of them have mental health issues and Andrew can speak to from that perspective, but you know, how do we get them vaccinated? How are they um, um, educated and brought into the fold? Where a lot of them, they don't have access to you know, modern uh, technology as far as a phone or, or a website. So how do we get into those those pockets of the community where those are so disenfranchised and get them vaccinated, get them educated about the importance of knowing, you know, the, the implications of this vaccine. I think that is a pocket of society that, that um, hasn't, hasn't been spoken a lot about. Yeah. And I think it's great that we have Dr. Matthews who's gonna be able to speak on that. And yeah. Andrea, yeah. It, it, no, I, I think, you're absolutely right. And so, but I, I think what, what the bonus behind this is, is the ability to hear facts and truth as we know it, as they know it from these experts. Right. And so, you know, our thing is, there's a big push now in every community. I sit on the task force now. How do we message that black and brown people have to take the shot? And, you know, I've, I've heard from scholars say, uh, you know, that, Tuskegee was years ago. Well, no, not really. Tuskegee is today. And so, um, you know, we can talk about Henrietta Lacks and Ed mm. Hopkins. We can talk about just access, period. And so, you know, there is lots of apprehension from Black and Brown people about this, about, about doing this. And yeah. so, and 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 I think collectively, we've, we've decided our goal isn't to push you to take the vaccine. But what our goal is, is to educate you on what, what, what's available and, and the what ifs. And you make an informed decision based on that. And I, you know, I've heard people say, everybody's talking about COVID, but there's a whole generation and a whole group of community of people based on the digital divide that don't, don't hear that. Yeah. So you know. Absolutely right. Oh. And one great thing is uh, our moderator, she's a a local reporter in the New England area who's well known for her work. She's a, a health reporter and she's been out 
on the ground talking about this issue, about informing, especially communities of color around this vaccine and how, how important it is the messaging. We need to make sure those who are doing the reporting and those who are the ones who are, you know, telling the stories that they're making sure that they're, you know, addressing all communities and also um, making sure that the people that they're showing it's reflective of people who look like us, right? You don't want to see anybody who's in, in those exclusive zip codes. Yeah, it's great that they're getting um, getting the, the vaccine or getting the education. But again, what about those pockets? What are those voices that are not heard? Um, how do we get that messaging to them? So it's, yeah, it's going to be a great, powerful discussion. You know, you mentioned those affluent communities out there um, who may, who we think may have um, easier access to that vaccine. I, I know in the Chicago community, uh, within the city limits of Chicago, there's reports that some of those people are actually coming into the inner city because yeah. our people are not going to take advantage of the shots. And so they're calling around these various clinics and, and, and places where the vaccine is being distributed and getting on that list to have their vaccination take place. So it's just all so interesting, you know, it's just. It's, yeah, it's, it's, an, it's, it's an interesting it's, time. Yeah. People, are, people are confused. There's a, 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 a conspiracy theory going around, um, yes. especially among some of our millennials. Um, that's the government's way. When has the government ever given you anything? You know, uh, I mean, so, you know, and so I, I, I just listen because. Yes. You know, I just listen, you know, um, yeah. and so we have, you know, I, I think, that, again, there's lots at stake and the, our jobs, I think, in, in, in this field, as, as respected in our fields, is to present the truth as we know it mm -hmm. yes. and then let people make informed decisions. Got it, got it, got it. And so those are, are some of the panelists as well as some of the key topics that are going to be addressed uh, real quickly before we give the information about the webinar. Is there any other key topic that you want to um, just throw out there so people can, you know, take a bite and make sure that they uh, participate next week? I think one of the things we do want to make sure everybody knows that at, during the webinar, we're going to offer resource links and okay. ways that they can, you know, once they, they watch it or they hear it, if they need to be, help get their gotcha. decision be more informed, click on this link or go to the CDC and give people direction to where they can find out more. I think resources is the key. Again, a lot of people want to um, get self-educated before they make a decision if they're going to get it. So giving them as many tools and resources out there that's possible, I think that's important. That's one thing we're also going to provide. And I think people should know, in addition to the resources, this is not the end of the conversation. It's not gonna be the end of the conversation. And so what that looks like as this emerges, we will see, but we will have uh, more dialogue. And so again, things will be available to people as they come, be, uh, you know, get their feet wet. Maybe I do, maybe I don't, but this will not be the end of the conversation. Absolutely. Very good, very good. And so let's just go ahead and share that information. It's called the first 100 days town hall. The COVID-19 vaccine is here. Now what? And again, the featured speakers are Derek Johnson, president and CEO of the NAACP, along with Dr. Alden Landry, who is associate professor of emergency medicine at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. And so go ahead and um, let's just put it out there. How can people get connected to this um, event, the date, all of that? Absolutely. So it's February 23rd, 12 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can register at colormagazine.com. Go there, get more information on all the speakers. Um, and then there's a registration link there. And we are gonna, we're all on social media. You can also go to the Black Mental Health Alliance's um, page. They're gonna, we're, all, we're all out there on LinkedIn. All you have to do is search the topic and the date, and we're going to show up everywhere. We're going to do some IG stories. We are you know, getting the word out and, and share, share it with people that you know. Get it out to the communities. We're doing some outreach to our local NAACP chapters, and we really want the community to come and listen and get educated so they can make informed decisions. Yes, 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 yes. 
All right. So, and what I'll do too, ladies, is I'll, I'll drop the link in the, the comment section of my, or description section of, of this particular video. And if you send, um, I might have the flyer, the actual picture flyer. I'll, I'll make sure I drop that on the website too. So people can just click on that to, to uh, get linked up with, with this important event that's going to be taking place. This is just, you know, we, there's a few um, organizations across the country that are doing what we're doing right now, trying to get the word out and, and, and come up with these events. But, you know, we, we get those little sound bites on, on regular media and it's just not enough information for people to, to make informed decisions. So, you know, hats off to you ladies for, for putting this event together and, and, and securing these dynamic panelists who are gonna get into it and, you know, really share the important information that the people need so that they can um, make informed decisions. And, you know, we can just hope for the best and hopefully everyone will connect someone else who may not be connected as you referenced the digital, digital divide earlier, you know, some people who, who need this information may not be digitally connected. So yeah. if anyone viewing this can get somebody that you know needs to hear this with you on the, the computer or the phone or however you view this event, uh, bring them on board so that they can get the information and hear it too for themselves. Before Absolutely. we go, lady, any ladies, any closing remarks? No, I just want to thank you, Marilyn, and, and your Cafe Society for giving us another outlet to, sh to share um, what we're doing. You know, it's been a wonderful partnership, like I said, with Color and BMHA, and this is not the first time we're going to do this event. As we discussed, this is the education continues as this virus is not going away anytime soon. So we... Uh. Appreciate you. But you know, I, I know I keep hearing people say that the virus is not going away. And I guess because it's, what do they call it? It's um, mutating and yeah. Mm -hmm. Mutating. And I call it the remix versions of the, of the virus. I, I, you know, I hate to make light of it, but you know, it's, it's like yeah. the numbers when I read the, the weekly reports from John Hopkins, the number of cases are dropping the number of cases and deaths are dropping, but this, these new varieties of, of the COVID-19 are popping up and increasing. And uh, as we're hearing is apparently even more deadly. So we cannot, even with the vaccine, they're saying, you still have to mask, you still mm -hmm. have to social distance, you still have to um, wash your hands and, 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 and all of that. So you're right, we, we have to behave and act as if this vaccine is not going away anytime soon. Yeah, unfortunately. And I think, quite frankly, Marilyn, to, to your point, you know, now, and if, and if it is going away, what does the road to real recovery look like for black and brown community? And that's an, that, stay that's tuned. another topic. Yeah, stay tuned, stay we're doing tuned that. And, and come on back, everybody. We'll have the ladies back and we'll continue this, this conversation and, and um, yes, putting that information out there for people because that's the main thing. Yeah. That's the main yeah. thing. Thank you, ladies, so Thank much. You. I appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. Stay Keep safe, up the good healthy. work. And, and just in case I didn't get the actual picture flyer, I think I do. Um, um, I'll reach out to you, Camilla, and, so that That's I can good. get that posted. Thank All you right. So much. To stay healthy. Take care. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. God right, bless. Thank you. Right, likewise. Bye. Mm -hmm. All right, Camilla Avant and Andrea Brown, everybody stopping by Maryland's Cafe Society to talk about this important event, the first 100 days town hall. The COVID-19 vaccine is here, now what? It's taking place on Tuesday, February 23rd at 12 p.m. Eastern time. That would be 11 Central, 11 a.m. Central. And so I'll put the link and the notes from the YouTube video, as well as uh, the flyer with the link on MarylandsCafeSociety.com for you to click on so that you can go ahead and get registered. And again, be sure that you uh, spread the word to the community. And again, if there's anybody that you know who need to hear this and, and may not be digitally connected, 
uh, make sure that you get them with you um, at your laptop, computer, or phone to check it out next Tuesday. All right, so uh, we're going to segue into our next segment. And of course, um, it's our entertainment segment. And my guest is Joni Pilato. And of course, Joni is a soloist, a jazz vocalist, a voiceover talent, and a music extraordinaire who has toured with the Glenn Miller Orchestra. She co-owns with her husband, Bradley Parker Sparrow, Sparrow Sound Design Recording Studio, along with Southport and Northport Records. She's a graduate of the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music. Joni arrived in the city of Chicago back in 1979. And it has not been the same since she arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, thank. Let's give Joni a warm welcome for joining the show. Joni, how are you? Hi, Marilyn. Can you see me? I cannot see you. Let me see if I can change something here. Okay. Speaker view. Uh, is yeah. your video view off? Hey, Sp uh, Sparrow. Turn the video on. Okay, we're all learning, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Video settings. Sparrow, here it is. No? At on. the bottom, um, it should show um, mute and then video at the bottom. And you should be able to click on the video to show yourself. And see myself as active speaker. We don't want to hide video participants. Are, am I there? Your video is no. not here. Let me see if there's something I can do on my end. Um, okay, on the bottom, start video, start video. Start okay. video, that might be it. So <laughs> we click, let's see. Do you know? I did. Start video. There you are. There you there are. I am. There I am. Am I there? You were. <laughs> I was. Start video. I keep clicking. There it is. Am I there? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> we did it. We did it. Hi, Tony. You're all going to win an award. <laughs> Hi, <right>. Bradley. <laughs> you look wonderful. Oh, thank you, Marilyn. Thanks for helping me troubleshoot that. It's like two is two is always better than one. Thanks to your husband, right? <laughs> well, I, I just introduced you to our audience, Joni. I mean, you have a very interesting background. I did tell them that you arrived in Chicago back in 1979, and the city yes. hasn't been the same ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that I when I arrived, there was snow up to practically up to my waist. The winter of 79. Yes, yes. That was a doozy. What an introduction, huh? <laughs> I really to, wanted to be here. Welcome to the Windy City. <laughs> well, listen, uh, man, you've accomplished so much since then, Joni, as I um, said in the introduction, you, you're a soloist, you're a jazz vocalist, you do um, voiceover work, your, your voice has been heard on commercials all across the country. Uh, you, you, of course, uh, co-own uh, a music studio and, and two uh, record labels with your husband. And, you know, folks have been paying attention. And as a result of all that work that you've done, not to mention all the artists, that you've worked with and and have taken on on your labels and things of that nature. And so the 39th annual Chicago Music Awards Committee of Folks have been watching and they said it's time. It's time <laughs> to honor Joni. And so Aww. you're going to be receiving this special honor on Sunday, February 28th for the 39th Annual Chicago Music Awards. Talk to me about that. How do you feel? You know, it was a surprise, of course. Yeah. yeah. It's such an honor um, to be recognized 
uh, you go through life and you accomplish things and you sort of, I don't know, maybe you take yourself for granted. You don't think about it because you're not walking down the street every day, day and people are saying, hey, you did good, <laughs> except like your mom or something. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> to, to be selected as a Lifetime Achievement Award, well, it's an honor. And I also feel like my work has just begun, Marilyn. You know, oh, the work I, has just begun. If I'm being recognized for such an achievement in my life, that inspires me to keep going, really. It really does. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lifetime. I think some people hear Lifetime Achievement Award and they think that, oh, she's wrapping up her career, her work is done. And, you know, no, 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 no. <laughs> You, you say you're going to keep going. And of course, we're going to get into um, that, that uh, latest project, actually, that you um, just completed. But before we go there, yeah. man, talk about your illustrious career and, and, of course, touring with the Glenn Miller Orchestra. I bet you have some great stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was Glenn Miller. Uh, orchestra, the Glenn Miller, it was right out of high school. I mean, I'm sorry, right out of college. Yeah, yeah. And um, one of my great teachers at school connected me with that organization. And it was the original Glenn Miller, the real charts. Um, we, I, I would sing different songs that were known with the Glenn Miller band. And I got to hear all those great Pennsylvania six, 5,000. ba do ba Pennsylvania six five thousand. All right. It was fun. It was um, it was a good th good experience so early in my career, I would say. Um, and yeah, then right out I, of college. Yeah, right out of college. Yeah, and then moving to Chicago um, just opened up a whole new world for me personally and for my career as well. Um, just being able to be in a larger city um, where there was so much more opportunity. And that's really when um, I started singing commercials, jingles. We Got call it. them jingles, you know? Got it. Got it. And I really think that experience really informed a lot of my life because in, in a recording studio doing jingles and working with all the best people. I was so privileged to work with great producers like um, Ira Antelis and Cliff Colnott, Paul Wilson, to name a few. Um, top of their craft, all the musicians and singers were top of their craft. And I learned so much and got to sing in all different genres. You know, commercials, you'd sing pop, you'd sing r and you'd sing gospel, you'd sing classical. So it was really a good experience to, to learn how to perfect something. That, that's what impressed me about doing commercials. When you walked out of the recording studio, you knew that that little 30 second or 60 second spot was virtually perfect because all the people were so professional. It was a great experience. I, I, I'm so thankful for that. Yeah, so you yeah. perfected your voice, your, your voice. Well, it, it your helped instrument. Me, yeah, yeah. It, it just helped me learn so much about singing in groups, singing solo, the mm -hmm. voiceover thing was, you know, a different thing too. So mm -hmm. it was pretty, it's very, very good. And then, and then of course, even um, owning the studio that, that you have along with the uh, Southport and Northport Records, you're you're in there and you're doing everything you know you're you're recording you're producing you're doing production you're just all over the place but it's not a jack of all trade type of situation you're perfecting everything that's a unique position to be in Joni well thank you for saying that i i have to give a lot of credit to my husband to bradley parker sparrow everybody calls him sparrow Okay. Uh, when, yeah, when we met, he had the studio and he had a record label with his first record that he produced. 
And um, I remember him telling me that he, he shopped the record around to different labels and no one would put it out. So he said, I'm just gonna start my own label. So that's how uh, Southport started. Uh, then I, we started recording other artists, friends of ours. And really, Marilyn, probably one of the biggest privileges in my life remains having worked with so many artists in, in our studio at, for Southport Records and other artists coming through and, and helping them produce engineering and getting their music the way they wanted it to be heard, realizing, yeah. helping them to realize their dreams. Yeah. That was a really a gift, you know? That, yeah. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. I get that. That's sort of like what yeah. I'm, what I do. I, um, I get an opportunity to meet people like you, you know, and, and sure. interview and talk with you and, and all of that. So I, I get it. Yeah. With, it, it with expands the exception, your With the exception of you're actually helping to, to help them perfect and improve their craft. And I just get to talk about what you're doing. <laughs> But, it's but still that's, a connection. Important. that's important because we need you to help us promote what we're doing. Yes, right? yes, yes, yes. Right? Yeah. So we all have our little part. We all have a part in this. So yeah. just drop a few names. What are some other artists that, that you uh, worked with? Well, um, you know, we just completed, well, we're still working on it, but our most recent project with Southport Records is a very good friend of mine and a wonderful singer. She did a lot of jingles with me too back in the day, Josie Falbo. And her record is called You Must Believe in Spring. And this woman can sing everything from soup to nuts, to classical, okay. to, to R&B, to gospel. But um, this pro particular project, she focused on really the, the great American songbook, classic standards and beautiful Duke Ellington, Billy Strayhorn, oh. so many gorgeous songs with a full yeah. orchestra. Yeah. So yeah. really yeah. having her produce this magnificent uh, recording was, was a big feather in our cap. And uh, really it's really put our, our label on another level, I think. And then of course, um, all the great jazz artists in Chicago, uh, legends that we've been able to work with. Uh, Von Freeman, who's no longer with us. Uh, Von Freeman is, is just the Chicago tenor sax sound, Vonsky. Uh, Willie Pickens, again. Yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. And it was just so wonderful. We recorded uh, several albums with Willie. Do you remember King Fleming? King Fleming, the great pianist, um, he recorded two records with him. And one was a, an album that I recorded with him called The King and I. The King and I, that was Oh, fun. how cute is that? <laughs> so, some originals that we co-wrote. I put some lyrics to his songs, some standards. Um, and then, oh, I can't forget my good friend, jazz legend, George Freeman, guitarist, George Freeman. Gotcha. He won, he won a, a Chicago Music, Music Award in, 2017, I believe it was. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Award. Yeah. Yeah. And that I, whole Freeman family in Chicago is just royalty, really. I talk with George every week. He's doing great. We did the Jazz Fest together in uh, Chicago Jazz Festival in 2019 with okay. Billy Branch, who's oh, yeah, up yeah, yeah. the best blues award. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All That's these names I know and have met a few. I know. Uh, I know. Yeah, over I'm, the I'm years. So lucky. They're all friends yeah. and, and I just consider myself lucky to know. Yes, them, yes, know, yes, I get it. I, I understand, I understand. Well, listen, Joni, you said just because you're getting this Lifetime Achievement Award does not mean that you're at the end of your career. And so I know that you share with me that you're, you um, are gonna be releasing a new project. Is it um, in April? Yes, um, Marilyn, I just released uh, the first single from the record. Um, this is the way things are done now. Uh, so many new things to learn. Always something new to learn, right? And that's your new single. Do butterflies cry? Yeah. 
Um, Do Butterflies Cry is my new single. It dropped last week, which means it's uh, available on Spotify. You can download it. You can stream stream it. You can hear it. Um, and the really uh, special part of my new album, we can still call them albums, right? The CD. Mm -hmm. um, my album is called My Original Plan. Oh. It's going to be available April 16th. Um, I co-produced it with the wonderful guitarist Farid Haq, who um, just, it was an amazing experience to work with Farid. I've recorded with him over the years, but doing this, producing this record with him really, I, I feel like it put it on another level. So okay. I'm very thankful to him for that. Yeah. Okay. And his playing is gorgeous. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this one, um, I, like I said, I've listened to it several times. And you, you have a wonderful voice. And the, the lyrics. Aw, you like the lyrics? The lyrics are just so heartfelt, I, you know, and so on point when, when you think of butterflies, you know. But you can also I uh, think of it metaphorically, right? As, I think so. Mm -hmm. As, as um, you're singing about a person, you know? Yeah. And um, you mentioned the lyrics. I have to, again, give credit to one of my inspirations, Sparrow, my husband. <clears throat> he uh, co-wrote the lyrics with me. So he, he came up with the opening line, Marilyn. So steal the sky. Isn't that beautiful? Oh. Uh... Yeah. Awesome. awesome. And there's a video. We did a video. You can, uh, it's available to watch on YouTube. Do Butterflies Cry? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, did you send me that link? No, you didn't send me the link. I'm not sure. I, yeah, I will. Yeah. I will. Yeah. Okay. I'll, um, I'll look for it. Um, and then I'll just put it in the notes. Um, you know, once this once this show airs, it's going to air on Saturday. So I'll put it in the notes Good. for people Good. to click on. All well, you're, right. Marilyn, you're promoting me, right? And I'm going to promote your show. So I'll put it on social media and <laughs> oh, we'll so work sweet. together. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. Well, listen, Joni, are you are you getting butterflies as a uh, next sunday approaches <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> no you know the funny thing about uh nervousness i've always looked at it more as um nerves you you get the energy of nerves but mm. it's not not being nervous do you know what i mean gotcha it's energy yeah yeah it's mm -hmm. energy yeah. And you can I got I got nervous once. I got nervous once in high school and I talked to my teacher and I said you have to help me. I don't ever want this to happen to me again. And he said the right thing whatever it was at the time that that helped a lot. And that's why teachers are so good too. We have this to thank our true. teachers, right? This is true. This is true. Yeah. And so so we can embrace and use our energy or nerves or we can succumb to them. That's true. <laughs> hopefully That's true. we use them <laughs> and embrace them. Yeah, that happened to me once in high school. I, we were we were at some speech competition, Joni, and yeah. Oh, we practiced, we practiced, we practiced. I nailed it every time and got to the place. And my um, my teachers, you know, and coaches, they kept saying, whatever you do. Don't look directly at anyone in the audience. Just kind of look over everyone's head. Yeah. Somewhere in the middle of my speech, I made eye contact with someone. <laughs> and it just that did it. threw me off. I think I managed to kind of stumble through the rest. But oh, my God, I was so disappointed in myself. And and, and it uh, was a learning experience, it was right? A learning experience, yeah. yeah. You know, for your first time, you really shouldn't, you know, look into the look at people in the audience, 
that's for more experienced people. Right. It's yeah. yeah. And you can't yeah. be too hard on yourself. You just have to let it go. Yeah. 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 But I was set up to win that thing and I stumbled through. I think I placed, I don't know, maybe third, second or third or something like that. But yeah. <sighs> so, so we have to learn, we have to help the young people, you know, um, yeah. those right. who, are, who are beginning to not make those mistakes and then like you said not beat yourself up if you do no just move on to the next thing this is correct yeah. yeah this is correct well listen it is just a pleasure to speak with you and meet with you i really um am bummed out about this whole uh COVID thing and that we won't all be together um in a big venue with i the know audience. You know, I, I know. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to be on the, on the walk, the catwalk, and be on the floor the with a gorgeous carpet. cat. Yes. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite things to watch on TV is always those live from the red carpet. You know, when you mm -hmm. see all the stars. You know, mm -hmm. but it's okay because this too will pass. We know yes. that. Yeah. And it's funny, Marilyn, because. Um, in some ways, I think this technology is bringing us together in a new way that yeah. we need to embrace that. We need to embrace it and just uh, use it, <laughs> work it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this kind of thing was typically reserved for business meetings, right. communication meetings. You had a few households who had been Skyping for years. Right. Um, but... Yeah, because of, of everything that happened a year ago, we're now all embracing this thing. And it's 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 the best next thing to telephoning yeah. and actually being right there, being able to touch it. And in some ways, you know, um, the, the, the grandmas and the aunties and the people that never got into it, technology, they're doing it better than we are. They're like, boom, 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 boom. I'm like, how did you know how to do that? You know, and the kids know it and the grandmas know it. So now we have to learn how to embrace it too, right? Yeah, I'm telling you, I, I was, I was um, so excited to be Zooming now because I, you know, my radio, my background is in radio. And right. after my uh, radio situation kind of came to an end a few years ago um, and I wasn't getting calls to, come anywhere else I said well I gotta keep doing what I've been doing and Re so right I reinvent yourself you yeah, reinvent I remember, yourself I remember this YouTube channel that I had created back in 2009 and I said well I'll do my show on YouTube and so because I wasn't familiar with video um I right. would I would have you on and we would just be talking on the phone people wouldn't be able to see you this is better so right. now I learned how to do this Zoom thing and there you are. I can see your face and we can actually talk to each other and see each other. That's great. And you know, it's true because for my record, for my new record, um, someone was asking me, well, how, how are you going to uh, market it? And how are you going to get it out there? In some ways, I mean, we can send everything now through wave files and yeah. send radio stations and college stations that they might not even be able to go into their office, but they can access the music easily through the technology of, of streaming and, Isn't that and things like that. So, so in some ways, you know, it's, it's, it's helping us. So it we is. just have to embrace it and, it and, and, and a virtual embrace and a hug for you. And thank you so much for having yes, me on your Johnny, show. Johnny, thank really you so it. much. And congratulations on that Lifetime Achievement Award. And I'm sure we'll be seeing or talking sometime between now and uh, the 28th of February again. So God bless Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll talk again. Okay. Peace. Bye. All right, everybody. And that again is Joni Pilato, who stopped by the Cafe Society to hang out with us and mm -hmm. um, share how she's feeling about this. Um, award that she's going to be receiving and of course also sharing her um new 
music that she sent that she sent um, to me. And again, it's called uh, Do Butterflies Cry? And I'll have the link placed in my um, my notes. Want to get this show posted on Saturday. All right, everybody. All right. So um, before we close out the show, I do want to share with you a Black history moment. And um, again, it's just to remind you about the Black Heroes Matter organization and how uh, we need to support the efforts that they're trying to do uh, to get the city of Chicago to properly honor Jean Baptiste Point du Sable, Chicago's founding father. And of course, um, you can find out more about everything that they're trying to do if you go to Black Heroes Matter dot org and also remember our new word um, for the year for the month of february is quiddity quiddity and quiddity quiddity means the inherent nature distinctive feature or essence of someone or something all right so quiddity just use that word throughout the day throughout the week share with everyone else and by the end of the month we'll have yet another word in our vocabulary. Now remember, um, last month, the word was Janissary, which is a dedicated or devoted follower or supporter. And back in December, the word of the month was Marific, working wonders or achieving wonderful and amazing things. So uh, that's two under our belt and we're working on this, this new one, um, which is quit entity. Quit Eddie, quit Eddie, quit Eddie. Say it right, Marilyn. Quit Eddie. All right. So uh, that's it. Um, let's see. Before I go, again, I just want to remind you to check out Maryland's Cafe Society.com. Uh, there you'll find all the links to the various social media. And um, um, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Um, you'll also um, check out my friends on the website and, and you'll get important links to important events and, and things of that nature there at the website as well. And um, that's it. Again, um, this is our pre recorded show for this Saturday, February the 20th, 2021. And uh, of course, uh, we're, we're busy pulling together the upcoming 39th. Chicago Music Awards show that will be airing next Sunday, not this coming Sunday, but the two Sundays from now, February 28th, 6 p.m. on YouTube, Martin's International on YouTube, or just go to the Chicago Music Awards.org website to get connected there to check out that show. All right. All right. It's going to be good. I'm telling you, Joni Pilato is one of the. Um, special awardees and then um, uh, international Chicago wins, first of all, and then international superstars, Common and Kanye West are also receiving special awards. And again, the performers um, are uh, just about finalized. And so we'll get all that information shared uh, through my website and I'll put links to, to the other websites so that you know what's going on with them, all right? All right, well, um, if you don't do anything else this week, be sure everybody that you remember to live, to laugh and to love. As always, it's a pleasure and a privilege to hang out with you on Maryland's Cafe Society on YouTube and we'll do it all over again. All right. Uh, I'm kind of rambling. Did I say live, laugh, love? <laughs> live, laugh, love, peace and be safe.